Welcome. Today is Tuesday, April 27th. It's Explore Tech Careers, the Future of Tech with Career Force, where we explore what um, companies are hiring for right now and kind of ask the question, what are they looking for when you go ahead and apply? Um, so glad to have all of you on. You know, this is our last event in our four part explore tech careers where we've been um, celebrating technology workforce month so april has been technology workforce month in career for career force we've had various job fairs blogs um, we have some technology training information sheets on the website so i hope that you all have gone to the Career Force webpage and downloaded or looked at some of the information on there. I'm putting the um, URL in the chat right now so you can access that again. So please let me know your stories. Send me an email, liz.jennings at state.mn.us. Tell me um, if this has helped you in your technology career change or in your job search. Today, I'm so pleased, happy to be um, inviting uh, four different speakers to talk about where they see technology going in, in the next couple of years. Uh, we'll hear from Prime Digital Academy. We'll hear from Mediacom, uh, Minnesota State IT Center of Excellence, and Lab 61 from four different perspectives, from the public university to kind of a, a small uh, startup, you could say, to a training facility, to a larger mid-sized company. Um, they all have a different perspective on this. And to start the conversation off, I'd like to um, welcome Barbara Bedke-Stabell from Mediacom. Barbara. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to be here today. And um, April is Tech Month. Uh, here at Mediacom, though, every month is Tech Month, I will tell you. Um, Going to start off here, just have a few slides um, for us here to kind of guide us through this. A uh, little bit about our company here, Mediacom. We are a telecommunications provider, and we provide cable, internet, phone, home security system services, and we are in a total of 22 states across the U.S. Obviously, Minnesota is one of them. We focus on smaller towns and suburbs around bigger cities, but again, uh, cable TV, internet, and phone service, uh, high-speed data internet service, and voice over IP phone service. Uh, we can go to the next slide here. And um, the next step for Mediacom, now that you know a little bit about what we do, our next step is actually already here. Um, we've got the one gig product for internet speeds. Uh, we're now up to 10 gig or 10G uh, internet speed, especially for home technology. And we're gonna be launching that in other areas. We've actually got um, a video uh, for our next screen. Hopefully our next slide, hopefully it works. And if it doesn't, we've got other slides as a backup, so. There we go. See if this video works. This new 10G service that's right here in this house is really going to impact how people live, work, and play. We have over 80 connected devices in the home. Does one thing need uh, 10G? No. But if you're going to be a home filled with new technology, that's really where I think the 10G home starts to make sense. The 10G home is just cutting edge and it's really showing how important it is to connect all of our communities throughout the heartland and the entire U.S low latency, very fast bandwidth, high reliability, high security. These are the building blocks that make our products better. All right, thanks Liz for playing that. We were really hoping that that video was gonna work as well as it did because uh, that video 
Uh, it comes from YouTube. Um, and there's actually two videos on YouTube if you go ever, you know, take a look at it and it's uh, Mediacom and 10G Smart Home. Uh, there's a three minute video that was just a quick little 50 second video. So if you really want to see more, uh, go to YouTube and you can play that. A uh, few things for us in our uh, 10G uh, technology that we're able to provide in homes, apartments, townhomes, um, retirement facilities, places like that. We've got the home automation. Uh, on that next um, screen there, it looks like Liz, you're going to share. There you go. Perfect. Um, we've got the home automation, uh, meaning that things are on voice command and some of us may already have this at home right now, but I can tell you not to the extent of having 10 G to be able to provide that uh, meaning that you've got everything voice command everywhere, whether it's, you know, lights and door locks, security system, your um tvs your fireplaces uh all sorts of stuff you can ask you know a hey google or or okay alexa uh that kind of thing and everything all over in the home uh, and especially if you've got a big family you know 10g is going to be the way to go we can go to the next slide here liz thank you for that and uh moving into the kitchen area of the 10g smart home this is the area I love to cook. So for me, this was really cool. Um, right now, when you think about your kitchen, you know, yeah, it's great and everything, but here in the next year or two, you're gonna see more advances in uh, technology within the kitchen, whether you're talking about your refrigerator, your microwave, your stove, your range, uh, all of that kind of stuff. They're actually adding Wi-Fi technology into that uh, so that you can tie it to, uh, you know, your cell phone. So as you're driving home, if you want to, you know, or maybe before you start driving, you should never text and drive, but as you're before you're, you know, driving on your way home, you can, you know, tell your oven to, uh, you know, turn on preheat at 350, um, that kind of thing. You can set it up to actually start boiling water. I mean, it's really interesting the stuff that they demoed in this home, more than just programming a coffee maker to turn on. It's it's more high tech. You can um, trying to remember, oh, the thing with the refrigerator, being able to communicate with your refrigerator, see inside your refrigerator, you know, take a look at what you have in there. So if you need to stop at the grocery store on your way home from work or whatever, you can do that. Uh, all of that kind of stuff. It's really some cool stuff. We can go to the next slide here, Liz. Um, so moving into the health and wellness and telemedicine side of things with our 10G uh, technology, uh, this really brought, when you think about what COVID did to all of us here this last year of 2020, um, a lot of us were doing telemedicine, home medicine, uh, having virtual visits with doctors, things of that nature, which was better than not having anything at all, but there's only so much, only so far you could go with those visits, you know, it's more, um, talking wellness and things of that nature with our 10 G. Uh, technology in the home, we're uh, able to send, the doctors are able to send devices, uh, ship them to those that are homebound that cannot come to a doctor's office or a hospital or whatever. And the picture at the top there is actually a gentleman holding a stethoscope uh, to his chest that the doctor on the screen then can listen, get the readings, everything's live, uh, everything's accurate. Uh, they can do blood pressure checks this way. It's really interesting, um, the, the world of virtual uh, telemedicine and how it's going to be more interactive with that uh, is really cool. We can go to the next slide. The gaming as well, obviously for entertainment, all of those that are, are gaming, uh, 10G is going to be the platform everybody's going to want in their home. If you have this as a hobby, uh, some people actually do it as a career as well. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, other things that were mentioned in there, and this was what I thought was the most futuristic of everything, um, the holographic entertainment uh, that can be uh, in a home uh, for that. And this is holographic entertainment that does not require uh, goggles, headsets, any, anything over your, over your head, over your eyes. It literally is a projection that is real life right in front of you. And it is the coolest, most futuristic thing I've ever seen. Uh, it took my breath away when I saw it. So, um, again, where is Mediacom in Minnesota? Um, we are located in smaller towns and suburbs around bigger cities. On the map there, you see the little yellow dots. Uh, the the kind of de depicts in a, a big graphic there where we're at. We're in southern Minnesota, uh, Twin Cities area, more in the uh, western and southern metro suburbs, and also in northern Minnesota, up around the Duluth area and the Iron Range area, and employment opportunities and all of those uh, geographic areas. We can go to the next slide. 
um, there. And um, so again, our technology with our technical careers that we offer, we provide you all the training, everything that's needed, even with our 10G uh, technology. Uh, we've revamped our training, added to it. Uh, we've got guys and gals, different age groups, a diverse workforce working for us for that. We also have, we can go to the next slide here, Liz. We also have um, the technology with our internet tech support reps that are both uh, call center uh, geared. And then we also have locations that we do allow walk-in customer traffic to come into where we're actually doing some live in-person tech support as well. Um, and just want to caveat with the, with these two pictures. Uh, these pictures were uh, prior to COVID, so prior to the mask wearing mandates and all of that. Of course, we're wearing masks and uh, social distancing and following all the CDC guidelines here uh, in our workplaces. So, but um, you go to the next slide here, Liz. Uh, wonderful benefits at Mediacom goes without saying. The one I want to highlight, which is the question I get asked uh, the most about, would be uh, discounts on services. You know, if I work at Mediacom and you guys have the cool technology uh, that you provide, you know, do employees get to enjoy that too? And the answer is yes. Uh, if you happen to live in our service area, you get a 90% pricing discount off of our regular retail pricing for all of our services, which is awesome. Uh, and then as far as on the last slide here, Liz, I think we're getting to the last one. Um, as far as how to apply and more information and connecting with me after today, uh, my contact information is right there. We do have our career opportunities uh, posted on our careers website. My email address and my phone number are right on there, and you can also text uh, as well. Uh, and if you have any additional questions, obviously we have the chat area of this as well, That, as Liz mentioned. Uh, and I know we've got a full docket of other speakers here today, so I don't want to take up much more than my allotment of time here, Liz, but thank you guys for letting me share. No, that, hey, that's great. And I know you were talking really quickly. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, you know, my question too is when you are hiring, what are, you know, what are you looking for? Absolutely. So when we are hiring, uh, we're looking for people that have an interest in wanting to learn, uh, a true interest in um, wanting to know more about the technology. It's kind of that curiosity uh, that's hard to train, um, but it's really something easy to encourage if it's already there, genuinely there. Um, we've got our own in-house training program. Our company, what we do is so specific and so particular, um, and we're advancing in such a fast rate that we you know, can't rely on people coming in with that knowledge and everything. We, we take it upon ourselves to go ahead and take that curiosity, that willingness to learn, and we will train you give you the knowledge, show you what you need to know behind the scenes of how the magic works and everything um, so that you can be successful in any of our technical careers here. Absolutely. So when you invest in a, a, a job or a, a person, you know, an employee, how much of a commitment uh, do you, you know, do you ask them to give you know, like two years, you know, for, yeah. for the training or what? That would, that would be great. Um, we, you know, training for us, honestly, is, I want to say lifelong, career long here, um, because our technology continues to advance. You know, for somebody new coming to the team to, you know, get the basic level of training in and done is a good couple of months of on the job, some job shadowing, one on one with some of the trainers, a little bit of virtual uh, real life, you know, training in the field and things of that nature. So, you know, that's a good couple of months just in and of itself. And then when you're, uh, you know, learning curve a little bit after that to kind of get the ropes and, and everything. And so, um, you know, ideally we, we like it when people, you know, interview with us and say, you know, I'm intrigued by this so much that I truly can see myself there, you know, two, three years. Um, that's ideally what we want to see. And usually, you know, after you're here with us, even just your first 90 days, you're actually promoted to the next level. So you're already getting promoted up within our ranks and at your first 90 days with us in our technology careers here. Um, we've got actually our career path is uh, called the building blocks career path. We actually have our own nickname for it here at Mediacom, which is really cool. As you come in, we put the first block down, building that foundation, and then we keep building and adding more information and you keep learning and, and experiencing uh, and getting more skills and more knowledge and interaction with some of the other employees and everything. And so you build your own building blocks into our career path and you keep promoting yourself up. So uh, it is really um, interesting. You know, start off on the broadband specialist side, 
kind of branch off into the system maintenance side. And then we've got our construction engineering side, which are the guys and gals that devise up and think up a lot of this uh, stuff and uh, design it uh, to make everything happen. It's really, uh, really a cool area. It really is. Thank you so much, Barbara, for being on the call today. I've put Mediacom's careers uh, URL in the chat. There are a couple of other questions that have come through. Maybe you can just type answers to them. And we're going to move ahead. I'd like to welcome and um, introduce Justin Grammons from Lab 651. Um, this is a St. Paul company, and it really complements well what Mediacom is doing for consumers. So, Justin, are you there? Yes, I am. Take it Great. away. All right. Thank you, Liz. Uh, and thank you for setting this up and for Career Force um, kind of being behind this effort of exploring tech careers and the future of tech. Um, as Liz said, my name is Justin Grammons. I'm the co founder of a company called Lab 651. Uh, 651 has historically been the area code in St. Paul. So, yes, we are located in St. Paul. We're also very much focused on the Internet of Things. And uh, I'll have some slides here, talk a little bit about what we do and the types of individuals that will be that we are hiring for both you know today but then as our business is continuing to evolve we'll be doing more and more um, hiring in the future so yeah just a quick bullet point here who was lab 651 i'll talk a little bit about how we got started some of our projects that we're working on right now today uh, some skills we're seeking and then how you can reach out and contact me and i'll be sure to put my contact information in the chat as well so let's go hop off to the next one so just a quick overview of lab 651 um, you know, we're, we're an Internet of Things focused company, and we provide cost effective best in class services to help these companies add sensors, connectivity and intelligence um, to their physical products. So I thought it was really awesome that Mediacom was talking about connected appliances, because actually one of our clients is Kenmore, and we've helped them connect their appliances to the Internet. And once these appliances are connected, there's all sorts of really cool things that we can do, you know, using um, mobile applications and also getting a lot of this data back to um, the, ma the manufacturers or the companies that make these appliances to make better appliances in the future. And we believe smarter products are better products. I want to hop off to the next slide. Um, kind of how do we get, we, how do we get started? We've been around for about five years or so now. Uh, we have this belief that all companies, they need to modernize in order to survive. You know, selling physical products out in the field is only going to last for so long. And with the advent of the internet, everyone's used to having things connected on the internet. And that includes everything from you know, your computer, but also your appliance, you know, your car, your, your television, all these things are connected. And this data is going to be needed by businesses to survive, to make better business decisions, to build better products. And then also as consumers, we're just sort of demanding these things. And these businesses, they know their business. They've been making these things uh, for many, many decades, but they don't understand really the value and, and the difficulty that it can be to actually make these products connected and all of the security aspects and all of the software applications that need to be developed around it. So that's really what we do for our customers is help them get their products connected. I mentioned Kenmore. So here's an example. We actually did a big project with them this past year. They have smart appliances. They have refrigerators, dishwashers, ovens, all that type of stuff that are connected. And we built a completely new modern view application um, for their customers to take a look at how their appliances are being used. So what's the energy usage? Um, you know, um, can you, you know, are, are there error codes? Are there things that are about ready to fail potentially? Um, there's also some really interesting stuff around usage. So like when your dishwashing soap starts or your dishwasher has done so many cycles, it can go ahead and order you new dishwasher detergent, for example. So very, very nice, cool convenience features that um that that customers then can use to interact with their appliances and of course all this data now can be collected by kenmore to better understand how customers are using their products and to make better products in the future we move on to the next one we also worked with a company actually local here they're based out of bloomington they're called memphis grills and they actually make pellet grills and uh, these are wood pellets and they wanted to connect their grills to the internet for a lot of the same reasons that kenmore did customers were, were actually asking for it. They wanted to be able to check on their grill through either a mobile application, but we also did an Alexa skill and a Google Home skill. So you can ask your grill, how is the meat doing outside, right? What's the temperature of the steak that I'm cooking? So um, created a, a really rich user interface that uh, customers are able to use now to interact with their grill. And again, you know, Memphis now has better visibility into how their grills are being used out in the field and customers can interact with them. 
Well, I'll move on to the to the third one here. This is uh, another project that we've been working on, and I've got dozens that I can go over, um, but these are sort of three that sort of bubble to the top that I thought would be kind of interesting. This is a connected lawnmower, and so Craftsman has riding lawnmowers. They are connected to the internet via an app, and you can download an app as a consumer to take a look at engine runtime. So, you know, should you replace the blade um, on it after it's been run for so many you know hours? Um, what's the uh, oil pressure like? What's the battery level you know like? So you can get all sorts of diagnostic information on that application. But now Craftsman also has great visibility into where these tractors are being used. How often they're being used? How are they? How reliable are they? Right? And so there's a lot of data that's coming off of these these tractors, and then they can suggest upsells. You know, hey, there's the new model that's coming out this next year. Um, all sorts of great information now. And again, that's what I'm sort of like coming back to. Companies have been building these products for decades, but they don't really understand how they're being used out in the field. This is what we do. We give them that connectivity and that visibility. And it's kind of a win-win. You know, it's great for the for the consumer because they get some really cool technology that, that they can use. It saves them time and energy. And then the company themselves now has, um, you know, a, a better, I guess, a better customer relationship or better engagement with that customer going forward. So what are some of the skills we're seeking, right? I'm, I touched a, a lot here on technology. Um, so a lot of this stuff is software. You know, software sort of drives this. So everything from software inside the appliance or inside the grill or inside the tractor that I was talking about, that's all embedded software engineering. So people that have C or C++ skills. Um, and then, you know, there's an application involved in a lot of cases. So we have iOS and Android, so mobile applications. There's actually sort of two cross-platform development um, features, um, I guess, um, Frameworks is what I should say, called Xamarin and, and React Native. It allows you to sort of write the application once and run it on both platforms. All that data flows to the cloud. And so we deal a lot in a framework called Ruby on Rails, but also AWS, that's, that's Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure. These are where a lot of these companies are storing their, their data. And then once you get all this data, we've been doing a lot in the areas of artificial intelligence and machine learning, where we use frameworks such as TensorFlow or PyTorch to then allow them to take all this data in and start making better business decisions. So outside of some of these hard skills, we want to move on to the next one. More importantly, I believe, are the soft skills, right? We're looking for people that maybe have a personal project that they've worked on. Um, maybe something that, hey, have a track record of learning new technology. I mean, what's hot today is, is going to be old in the coming years. And we're always pushing the envelope, looking for new technology and ways that we can use it. We also, of course, want people that are passionate. I'm super passionate about what we do uh, and the team that we have built here at uh, Lab 651 and how it can really impact and change people's lives. And, you know, what we showed you here, what I showed you here was some very consumer driven stuff, but we're doing a lot of stuff um, that are that's even like, you know, we're actually monitoring soil uh, moisture in, um, you know, some of the areas of Australia for a company because they are going through a lot of drought. So this technology can really you know, change not only our personal lives, but also can impact you know, the earth. And then also somebody who's open to wearing many hats within the organization. You know, we've got about a 25 person organization. Um, and so that's between our employees and our, and our consultants and our contractors. So we're still relatively small um, in this space. And so you know, when, if you join our, our team, you know, we're looking for people that can be very creative and are open to you know, moving around and wearing a lot of, a lot of different, different hats within the organization. So I think to kind of like wrap up, how can you reach me? Um, there's my email address, justin at lab651.com. We have the website here, lab651.com. There is actually a careers page. Um, if you go lab651.com forward slash careers, you'll get to it as well. But in the menu bar, you'll be able to hop to our careers where we're hiring for all these positions that I talked about. Uh, we're also hiring for some, for some other things. You know, I, I, I was thinking about this before, um, you know, I, I started speaking. We actually have project managers that we're looking for. Um, as well. So while we're deep into the technology and a lot of engineering stuff, I will say that we also have other positions where, you know, you're not actually writing code every day. You might be, um, you know, overseeing a project and making sure that certain deliverables are getting set and um, are being executed on time. So, yeah, that's that's me. That's Lab 651. Hopefully this has been helpful. And uh, thanks again, Liz and and Career Force for allowing me to be here and share a little bit about Lab 651 and what we do. And the pleasure is all mine. Thank you for being on the call too. Um, one question, I think you might have answered it with the project manager comment. Um, someone asks, are you agile product owners using scrum masters? 
Uh, yes, yes, we are. Um, I will say that it kind of depends on the client. So sometimes we have clients where they actually run the project and they run the process. But if, whenever we control the project, for, for example, like we'll be the technical architect and also the implementer for some of these companies that maybe don't have that expertise in house. Yes, we, we use those methodologies. Um, we very much like to stay agile and be, be able to uh, adjust because a lot of these requirements as things get working, <laughs> you work through a minimum viable product with a the company, they start seeing new things. So we really try and keep ourselves open and we love those frameworks. I've been working in those for years. Um, do you ever have needs for promotion, marketing, public relations people? How do you handle that? Great question. We have a full-time uh, person who is a our digital marketing person here in-house. So she handles all of that stuff. So we have somebody on staff to do that. But again, I, I love talking to people. I love networking. Um, so please reach out. You know, If we have too much work, we're always looking to bring in people from the outside to help us. Great, thank you. Yeah, and there were a couple of other questions coming up, um, coming in the chat, um, but it sounds like you're open to people emailing you. You know, and I do want to ask you, this is a harder question to answer. Um, you know, we always coach people to, um, you know, show their passion for whatever industry they want to, uh, you know, apply to in their cover letter. Um, but what do you look for then? You know, you mentioned it too, that you'd love to get, you look for that passion in someone when they apply. What do you look for? What is, how do you know when you have it? <laughs> great, great question. I mean, like I mentioned any sort of pet project. So if you're in the engineering side and you're like, hey, I wonder if I could connect this thing, you know, Google provides you with a lot of ways to build, just to build technology, just on your own, just, just for fun. Right. Um, so I highly encourage people to, um, you know, again, just look around and try and build something on your own. To me, that shows a lot of passion. Um, I also think that, you know, if you're interested in, in building solutions for a connected home, like buy a connected home, like, you know, so start start buying, you know, buy an Alexa and start thinking about, oh, how would I make an Alexa skill, you know, do what I want to have it do. And so there are a lots of kind of low cost ways, I would say a lot of the cost is in your time. But if you can come to me and say, look, I, I, I wired this thing together, you know, and I say wired and in, in like sort of like quotes, but hey, I made this system work within my house. To me, that that shows that shows that, you know, you're you're inquisitive, you're creative, you have, you know, a, a knack for this and you're passionate about really wanting to build it. And you may not be the expert today, but that's OK. You know, I'm, I started everyone started at a certain point in their career. So I think just showing that initiative uh, really makes you stand head and above. Uh, you know, head and shoulders above, I guess, some of the other people that would apply. Great, thank you. Yeah, that really helps. Sometimes it's hard to put it into paper, or put it into words. Um, so yeah, thank you very much to Lab651 and please reach out, look at uh, his website. I put it in the chat, so thank you. Thank you. Um, let's shift focus a little bit and I'd like to invite Wilson Garland, Director of the IT Center of Excellence to talk. He um, has a different perspective in in the public education system. So, Wilson, are you there? I am. Thanks for uh, thanks for hosting this, and thanks for having me today. Um, I'm Wilson Garland. I'm the executive director for the Minnesota State IT Center of Excellence. Uh, we're one of eight centers of excellence that are part of the Minnesota State system, each focused on a different industry. Uh, and our mission is to help uh, build and develop and support uh, a more robust and diverse uh, workforce within the, the IT sector in Minnesota. And that's kind of our overall mission. Um, some of the guiding principles that we have and really how we do that within Minnesota, we work on inspiring students. We work in the, in the high schools uh, and throughout the state to try and get more people interested in pursuing IT as a, as a career path. Uh, we also work with faculty and students across the Minnesota state system to uh, ensure that the education that we have in technology careers is what's needed out in the, in the marketplace. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about some of those things because I think uh, it was interesting to hear what Barbara and Justin had to say. Um, and then the third area that we focus on is really engaging industry. And, and we do that to, number one, ensure that what we're doing at Minnesota State aligns with what industry needs, but also 
our industry partners are a key uh, part of how we deliver the uh, programs and, and services that we do. Uh, we almost don't do anything unless it involves the partner. So uh, thanks to all of you uh, who are potentially on this meeting who are, have been partners of ours and uh, offering the different programs and uh, camps and other things that we offer. So um, I'm just gonna give a, a few examples of what we do in each of these areas. Uh, in terms of inspiring students, we have uh, free curriculum for high school teachers that want to inject more uh, technology into their into their classroom. Uh, we also have uh, different sorts of experiences that we help promote uh, through Power Up IT and the IT Discovery Network, where students can do things both in the classroom and out of the classroom that kind of inspire their participation in the technology area. And in particular, we're trying to attract more women and people of color to careers in IT. Uh, and one of the things that we're known for is sponsoring the Minnesota Aspirations and Computing Award. Uh, so that's something we do within inspiring uh, the students area. The other area that we uh, focus on is enhancing education. And we have a lot of programs for faculty to ensure that they're up to speed on some of the new technologies. We have programs for students where they get to apply what they learn in the classroom uh, in a real life uh, work situation. And we also offer different sorts of research activities so that faculty and students can help to build their skills beyond uh, just what they're, what they're learning in the classroom. So um, that's what we're doing there. And then engaging with industry as the next area. And as I said, we do a lot of work to try and bring industry into the classroom and get uh, industry professionals involved in, in what we do all across Minnesota State. So with that kind of as a background, I just wanted to cover a few things that we're seeing in terms of the trends in technology. And I'll tell you, it's a, it's a, a privilege to uh, follow Barbara and Justin um, from Mediacom and, and Web651 uh, because a lot of the things that they talked about are things that we uh, really see as, as changes in the economy that uh, impact what we do and what we teach and, and what students learn. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that too and just in terms of how learning technology has changed and really what we see in uh, the importance of being a lifelong learner in the technology field. So uh, in terms of the trends in technology, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, the economy as we saw with Mediacom and, and Lab 651 really uh, drives a lot of what happens uh, in the economy. Uh, technology is essential to what we do and often the changes in technology education go overlooked. Um, but some of the big trends in technology that impact the education are some of the things that I've listed here. The digital customer experience is really primary. And I think a lot of the examples that, that both Justin and Barbara gave of how, uh, how people interact with companies, how people interact with products has really changed. And being able to operate on a team, a cross-functional team of technologists and business and other people in what they call agile teams. Uh, if you can master those skills and, and be familiar with what it means to do that, that can really help you excel within the, in the technology area. Uh, the two prior pre presentations did a great job of showing examples of artificial intelligence and how artificial intelligence and the internet of things is really changing how people interact with companies and products and even uh, companies uh, react, interact differently with their employees. Uh, with automatic scheduling and other things that would would have been unthinkable, you know, even 10 years ago. Um, also, along with that comes additional threats and challenges in terms of cybersecurity. Uh, Justin talked a lot about the data of things um, and how even refrigerators and other devices generate a lot of data that can be uh, stored, but that also means it needs to be secured. And so, uh, cybersecurity is a huge area where uh, it's really exploding from a career standpoint because there's so many new sources of data and so many different ways of trying to protect the data in the cloud and, and across uh, the infrastructure. And certainly the move to have more and more of the services and data in the cloud as opposed to in 
uh, machines in, in a, in a uh, server farm or whatever in a, in a, a particular company. That really opens up the opportunities for people that want to learn how to do networking in a different way and infrastructure in a different way. Um, and so those are some of the key trends that we see. And again, I don't have the great examples that we saw in the other presentation. So I would just look at it as an opportunity to really understand how technology is driving your life and what are the ways that you can participate. Uh, because what we see is that there are tremendous opportunities that uh, remain untapped uh, in terms of talent and, and places to really explore if you're interested. In terms of how technology is changing how we learn, um, everybody's experienced this year over the last year, almost regardless of any kind of school or university that you've been part of, uh, everything's moved online. Uh, but in addition to moving online, learning is becoming more modularized, more just in time. Uh, and so there's opportunities to take a look at how to learn in a different way. Um, also in IT in particular, a lot of what we're doing is focusing on virtual labs and practice tools and, and different ways of actually putting into practice the things you're learning in the class. Um, and often, what we find is that skills and experience are more important than degrees and credentials. Uh, and I think that that's something that's important um, to understand as you're thinking about how do I get involved in the, in the technology industry. And, and the last point that I wanted to really make um, is that if you are in, interested in technology, it's less about the particular skill and, and less about the particular program that you're in and more about how can you become a lifelong learner uh, in, in your career as an IT professional. And I think both Barbara and Justin gave some great examples there. You know, Barbara talked about the importance of curiosity and how really, in many cases, that's more important than a particular skill, because often the companies that you're going to work for are going to train you in the specific technical skill that you need. And, and coming with the soft skills that Justin talked about are just as important. Um, and often, you don't need a degree to get started. You need a technical certification or some sort of training to get started. Uh, but I would certainly encourage you to look at how would I start and then how do I continue? Um, and companies like Mediacom that offer tuition reimbursement are great places where you can build a career and uh, build your skills. And, and so those are things to keep in mind as you're pursuing a technology career. So those are the things that I wanted to talk about here. This is just some examples of different types of credentials and, and coursework that you can take to sort of uh, become an expert in technology and advance your career. Uh, I know we're going to be hearing about boot camps here in a, in a few minutes. And, and so from certifications and boot camps to two year degrees and four year degrees, uh, what it's really about is what's your passion? Where do you want to go in your career? And what sorts of training and education is going to get you to that next step? So that's that's what I have, and if you have more information, I'll put my information in the in the chat box. Uh, but feel free to reach out and learn about what we've got at Minnesota State. Thank you, Wilson. You know, one question that came um, to me privately was, what are you hearing from industry about all of the certifications? So, are industry specific certifications important? in addition to an IT degree, or is that overkill? Yeah, it really depends a lot on the, on the industry. It depends a lot on the company. In many cases, different companies have different requirements for their, their technical careers. Um, and, and I would say it, it also depends on your, your own interests. Um, I would say that in, in certain areas like uh, cybersecurity and, and other areas where there are a lot of certifications available, Certifications are certainly important because they show that you've mastered a certain uh, knowledge area. Uh, but often companies are also looking for examples of where you've been able to put that knowledge into practice. And, and that's one of the reasons why within our uh, programs and degree programs at Minnesota State, we supplement the, the classroom learning with chances to put uh, what you learned into practice that we offer some boot camps over the summer, for example, in cybersecurity and data science. Uh, you know, Justin talked about the importance of data in 
and sort of the Internet of Things and uh, data science is an area that's rapidly growing and it has a computing element. It also has a data analytics c component and so on. Um, and so really being able to practice with some of the tools and for data visualization and other things uh, is hard to hard to replace. So the certifications are important, but hands on practice and and the degrees for some companies, the degrees are still very important as well. Great, thank you. That helps. Thank you so much for being on the call today and telling us about the State Center, IT Center of Excellence. Lots of fantastic information. And to everyone in the chat too, um, I have put their website and I'll uh, give you the Min State um, URL so you can look at some of the programs. You know, that's the beauty of the Minnesota State System is that there's a school um, fairly close to you, no matter where you live. So thanks again, Wilson Garland. Um, now I would like to invite Emily Schumacher of Prime Digital Academy, um, Director of Student Affairs. Emily, are you there? I am, thank you so much, Liz. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, my name's Emily. Um, as Liz said, I go by she, her pronouns. I'm excited to talk to you about Prime Digital Academy. As all the other presenters uh, mentioned, kind of stole some of my talking points of soft skills, uh, but there's so many other ways to get into the tech industry, including self-study. So there, I just wanna say first, there are tons of options and I have some advice at the end of my slides if you're someone that wants to pursue self-study. Um, but we have uh, two programs in our uh, uh, Prime Digital Academy. And so I'm gonna talk through what we do um, what we were created for and, and uh, how we serve students. So our mission, we know that technology is changing the world. Um, as Wilson said earlier, with you know the pandemic, everything has shifted to online and certainly we're seeing a boom in um, the tech space as a result. Um, so we are a training provider to get people into the tech industry um, in under, you know, in months, not years. Um, our focus is really to diversify the tech space because we know um, that so much of the skills that you're going to gain in our experience is modeled after what it would be like in the industry. So we use um, what we call a, you know, boot, step, a boot um, camp model. It's an accelerated immersive learning program. So that's why it's months, not years. Um, and we move very quickly through the, the program, but focus so much of our time on practice. So you're learning and practicing um, in the same space. Um, you can go to the next slide, Liz. Thanks so much. So um, a little bit about our students in our program. So the, the folks that are attracted to our learning opportunities are folks that want to solve problems. Um, we have two different programs. So uh, we have the full stack software engineering program and the user experience design. Um, the full stack program is a really good fit for people who like to troubleshoot problems, problem solve, um, really enjoy puzzles, logic puzzles, understanding, finding solutions. Um, and some of the job titles of the students that come out of our program are full stack developer, software engineer, web developer, application engineer. I encourage you to look at the job outlook for both of these careers to see if it's a good match for you. Um, that's our full stack program in the UX side of things. If that is more of our program that focuses on research and design. So in the development cycle, you might have both UX and full stack uh, creating a digital product. So UX is focused on uh, meeting with users and stakeholders. So the business or a client and listening to what the needs are and then designing for that to give it to the developer to actually create a live product. So we have both programs. Um, at our school, it's really designed for those career switchers. So people that have existing uh, professional experience in any industry that really wants to get into tech, this is a really good option for you if you're interested in that. Um, Liz, you can go to the next slide. So a little bit in more in depth on our full stack program. Um, so we we have a full stack front end to back end program. So coming out of the program, students are able to make full stack web applications. Um, we go through three chunks of our program. We call them tiers. The first tier starts off part time in this program, and then you move into full time. And when we say full time, we mean 60 hours a week. Um, 40 hours of that is in classroom in our virtual immersion classroom, um, learning the content and practicing in group work. 
Um, and then you move into tier three, which is the final third of our program, which is all project based. Um, so as you're moving th through the program, you're learning and practicing, and then you get to put that into real projects. Um, as Justin was mentioning, like showing your work is really important and showing that passion. And so we uh, have you work on a, a personal project and then we do a client group project. Um, all of that helps you build out all the necessary skills to get started into the industry um, in an entry level position. And what's really cool about both of our programs, but specifically in the full stack program, the way that we structure the learning is set up so that you can continue your lifelong learning in this field. Um, we use a JavaScript framework and we focus on React um, as well. But the way we teach it can set you up for success to learn on your own. And that's actually one of the things we encourage you to do after graduation. We always joke that we have like a fourth tier. As you're job searching, you're continuing to build out your technical and professional skills. Um, in the UX program, uh, it's, a, it's a different focus. So you're focused on research and design. Some of the areas that we focus on are user research, information architecture, interaction design, usability, UI design. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a design background to be successful in this career, but you do have to uh, be excited about uh, people and understanding how they interact with a product or service or experience um, and really have empathy to really sit in their uh, shoes and design something that's meaningful for them. So a lot of people coming into the UX space have careers in a lot of other areas, but really want to focus their energy on um, user experience, thinking about what the user might need and making sure that those products are meaningful. Um, so a lot of times, you know, we use a website, for example, and it's, it's hard to navigate and hard to use. Um, that's where UX can come in and make those meaningful products. Um, so their roles uh, in UX, it's a little bit more ambiguous. The problem is not well defined. You're usually solving the problem and discovering the problem and designing for that. So it's a really cool balance between art and science. Um, and you will teach or you will learn both of those methods through the program. Um, coming through our program, we do focus on some technical elements as well. You will use obviously software to conduct your research and your design, but we do not focus on coding in this program. Um, so this program's 18 weeks, whereas the full stack is 20. Um, it's also important to note we are launching a um, evening part-time program this summer. Um, and so we know that the 60 hour time commitment can be a lot for folks who, who have other responsibilities outside of trying to go to school. So we have a part-time uh, evening program starting in July. Um, if you're interested in that, please reach out to us. We can get that uh, information to you. Um, and that will be, you know, 20 hours a week or so. Um, okay, next slide. Um, I saw this question. I just want to answer. Yes, right now the program is online because of the pandemic. So right now we are doing remote immersion for all of our cohorts. We do plan to go back on campus at some point, um, but we're just working with each individual cohort. We have cohorts in the full stack program starting every five weeks. So at the start, we just work with students individually. Right now we're planning to be remote until you know fall, and then we'll assess from there. Um, so what we focus on outside of the technical aspects, so we have the full stack and UX program, and those were the technical elements or tracks through the program. We also focus on really preparing you for a career. And we also uh, create this community where there's support for a lifetime. As cheesy as that sounds, it's really real. So I like to shed light on that. So the other areas that we focus on in preparing you for this career is uh, we do career development. We know it can feel overwhelming to undergo like this whole transition into a new career. So we help with resume, um, let uh, LinkedIn reviews, we'll do introductions to employers, mock interviews, all of those things and answer all of those questions that you have. Additionally, we do professional development. We focus on a lot of soft skill development. Um, coming into the program, we do an assessment with you and ask what you wanna work on during the program. And we do individual coaching and classroom conversations on those soft skills, making sure that you feel that you're leveling up and feeling supported in that exploration and growth as well. Um, something that's unique to us is we do mentorship and industry speakers. So 
Uh, the focus of that is they're all volunteers that come in and provide specialized content um, through our guest speaker program or mentorship is just to support you during the program, really to shed light on what it's like in the industry for you to ask all your questions um, about industry specifics from a different perspective. So those are group based and um, a really awesome opportunity for you to get that firsthand um, knowledge and experience from someone that's in the field. And then lastly, um, going through the program, we have high levels of support, but that doesn't end after graduation. We do ongoing job seeking support. And I can even tell you, even in your job, we are um, having meetings with alums talking through uh, any problems that they have at work or things like that, just doing additional coaching. That's all free and part of the experience. Um, so we do a lot of job placing support. We do weekly um, professional development and what we call stand ups for our job seekers. And then we do interview practice um, and things like that. So um, when we mean support for a lifetime, we mean that you have a cohort of folks that you can rely on and a community uh, to support you as you continue your career. Um, and then I wanted to include some slides because I know I work in the admissions team. I know so many people are doing a lot of self study because you absolutely can get into this industry um, working on your technical and personal skills and then applying for jobs. So I just wanted to give you a framework. If you're someone that wants to chip away at it on your own uh, before you consider doing any formal learning, great, go, go for it. So here are some things that I recommend. Um, Learn, apply, build, and network is a framework we use um, with our community, and it's just a really great way to structure your day or your week, thinking about what are you learning, um, focusing on your personal growth and development, um, whether it's technical or professional skills, all of those things are relevant, but you should continue to learn and be motivated to learn on your own. Apply, like you're never going to get the opportunity if you don't apply, and it just takes one job. So continue to get your uh, resume and those contacts out there um, if you're looking to seek a, a job in the space. Uh, build, what are you creating, right? You wanna show your work, how are you sharing your work? Um, throw it up on LinkedIn, get a personal website, all of those things will help you um, articulate your passion and your skill. And then lastly, network. I know it seems sometimes like hard to network, but it can be really simple. Just sending a message and an invite um, and doing more one-to-one, -one, that's great. People want to genuinely help you, so you should uh, get out and meet folks. If you want access to our learning resources list, I'm happy to send that. Just send me an email and I will send you um, for either a UX program or a full stack program, some things that you could be learning on your own. And then the next slide. Thanks, Liz. Um, just some things to remember. So progress, not perfection. So in job searching, if you're looking, even if you consider Prime as a good training opportunity for you, here are some things that just to remember as you go to apply or as you're working on your own. Uh, success leaves clues. So if you are getting emails back from employers or if you um, are getting those connections, you're doing something right. Keep doing it. Keep doing that work. Um, people want to support you in your journey. So ask those questions. Engage with people. We genuinely, anyone even on this call is probably willing to take a call and chat with you. Uh, learn as much as you can from free resources. That is a really great way to get some context and awareness, but also build out your skill. There are a ton of great resources out there. It can be overwhelming, so I can direct you to some that we recommend. Um, increasing your self-awareness, help uh, with interview, interview performance. So even uh, grabbing a trusted friend that you can do some mock interviews with, or if you're gonna do um, an informational interview, doing some practice is always good. Um, practice, get feedback and iterate. That's how we improve in all areas. So just keep doing that. Um, as other people said, you don't know everything and you're not expected to. Employers do not, they will train you on what they want you to know. Um, and so you don't have to know everything. And so kind of get that out of your mindset. It's so easy for us to think we have to know everything before we apply. And that is simply not true. And then, um, as Justin mentioned too, soft skills are essential. So thinking where are the areas that you want to uh, work on and level up and start chipping away at some free resources that you can uh, grab at on the internet. Um, I think I have one more slide here, right? Okay, so if you're looking for a new career, I promise you, you can do this. Um, and if you are looking for a formal training program, boot camp, or just uh, seeing if Prime is right for you, I am always happy to chat with students. I love to do that. So feel free to reach out to me and I'd love to connect and chat more. Thank you, Emily. 
Um, yeah, all of the information is great. And when I was, when you were talking, I was remembering of the success story of a man named Bruno who had uh, been laid off last year, um, got WIOA, you know, dislocated worker dollars. And then we wrote him up in a blog on Career Force. And he went through your program. Do you remember him? Yes, I do. Of course. That's awesome. Yeah, we there for for folks that were wondering about the cost of the program, um, everything is on our website, but we also have a multiple financing options. So I encourage you to get in contact with us because we can chat through what's available. There are scholarships, we owe a funds, all sorts of things that we can uh, help support you given your situation. So Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then on a previous Explore Tech Careers, we talked about the dislocated worker funding system. So anyone who's looking into that, um, you know, the best bet is to contact Emily, and then you can also contact your career force location in your area and ask, you know, to see if you're eligible for dislocated worker funds. So um, thank you. This is so great. Um, and I really like how all four of our presenters today really uh, connected, you know, all of the information leads one thing into another. Um, so, as I said in the beginning, please let me know, you know, if you are enrolling in a program or um, what you're going to be doing um, to get into the IT world. And of course, let Career Force help you. Um, the slide that I have up right now is um, just a reminder that we have on CareerForceMN.com a Top Tech Jobs Hiring Now webpage where it lists 13 different job titles that, um, that have hyperlinks to our Minnesota Works job database. And so just in this example that's on the screen, if you're thinking about going into control system uh, control systems as a computer scientist, click on it, it will lead you to the job board and you can see some of the companies that are currently hiring. Um, also use the minnesotaworks.net database. I typed in this morning software developer and got just, um, well, quite a few. These are just a few of the, the many jobs that I found. And they're even including a number of remote work companies. This Axiom is not a Minnesota company. It's, I think it's in Ohio, um, but they're hiring for software developers all over the country. So if you've got the skills and wanna work remotely, this is the time and the place now that you can get into that. Uh, Emily, have you been seeing some of your people um, get remote jobs, not just in Minnesota? Absolutely. Yep. We had someone just tell us they got a job in Chicago. There's no expectation to travel at this point and is working remotely and is loving it. So, yep, there, there are folks that are looking beyond the Minneapolis St. Paul area for sure. Right. Good. Um, short term training lists. Uh, it's again, it's another 1 of the resources on tech month. Um, included in that is the Prime Digital Academy and some of the other training programs that we've heard from over the past four weeks. We also have this fact sheet about the IT world if you want some of the labor market information. Um, and we've compiled it into, I think it's a three page PDF. So please, again, use all of these resources that we've created for you. Shifting gears right now, a reminder that tomorrow morning, Anoka County Career Force location is having a virtual hiring event um, from 1030 to 1130. Not only uh, IT companies, all companies in, in the area, healthcare, building products. Um, but if you're in the North Metro and looking for all sorts of things, it's worth joining and then having that conversation with the recruiter on the chat to see, ask them, you know, do they have any uh, behind the scenes jobs in technology or software or administrative? Because, um, you know, you might talk with an IT or a healthcare company and then find out they have something in their office that they're looking for. Um, next week and in May, um, my Explore Careers now is going to be shifting to some of the other industries. 
we're going to be talking about Minnesota's large food industry. Um, and we're not simply talking about picking vegetables, but all of the related jobs that are in um, Minnesota's food industry that keep us well fed. Um, and we also have, we'll be hearing from someone who's working to bring food equity to people. So um, please join us. And then the, the middle two weeks in May, we'll be hearing from MSP Airport because as the pandemic um, leaves us, cross your fingers, um, people will be traveling more. A reminder that all of our Explore Careers webinars are on YouTube as well as so many other Career Force MN uh, content. So please go to YouTube and sub subscribe to Career Force MN. Make sure you've got the Minnesota part in there. And then, as usual, please let us help you on your job search, whether it's looking at your resume, um, doing a job interview, mock interview. Um, or using Minnesota Works, we've got a whole bunch of seminars coming up. Again, I'm Liz Jennings. Uh, please email me. Let me know how you've found this Technology Workforce Month. Um, send me information. Let me help you get connected to your career force location. So thank you to all four of our presenters today. It's been a great conversation. Um, and take care, everyone. Thanks.